Hey guys, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a three-year-old named Kylie and I also have a 12-month-old named Mia. During the time that I'm filming this video right now, the coronavirus pandemic is completely overtaken the entire globe. And that means that many families are finding themselves indoors, quarantined away from other people, and just trying to find ways to live in much closer quarters for very long periods of time than they might ordinarily be accustomed to doing. And in light of all of this, it's it's really important to remember that children have a natural need to move. Asking a child to stay in one place and sit still for very long periods of time is just not developmentally natural or reasonable to ask of them. When young children are not afforded the opportunity to move freely and constantly as they desire to do so, that is typically when parents begin to see behavior meltdowns and emotional breakdowns and their child just not being able to make it through the day. So from one busy parent to another, today we're gonna chat a little bit about your child's natural need for movement and how you as a parent can support that in your Montessori home. One of the first sensitive periods that a child experiences is the sensitive period for movement, which begins at birth and lasts all the way up to about two, two and a half years old. It is during this period in your child's life that they are most focused, sometimes to the exclusion of all of the other activities that you make available to them, on the development of both their gross and fine motor skills. Newborn babies come into this world basically immobile. They rely on you and other caregivers to meet all of their needs, to help them get around, but very quickly they begin developing the ability to move. They are kicking their arms and legs and they're stretching out as far as they can. Very soon after that, they learn how to begin rolling over from their tummy to their back and then the opposite way from their backs to their bellies again. Before you know it, they're learning how to sit themselves up on their own. They begin crawling, although a few children will actually skip that step. And then they're pulling up to stand and finally walking. These are all of the basic gross motor developmental milestones that many parents very excitedly look forward to their child achieving. But alongside all of that, children are also focusing on their fine motor skills as well. And these are the movements of the hands, starting with batting at things and eventually moving on to actually grasping things with their whole hand. And then eventually they learn how to use their fingers and they develop a pincer grasp. And from there, as they get older, they begin to refine their movements more and more. In today's video, we're going to to be focusing exclusively on the development of gross motor skills. So those are all of the big, large movements that your child is working toward mastering. So in case you haven't already noticed, children are huge balls of energy, especially during the toddler and preschool years. But even when they're babies, you can tell just exactly how much energy they have by how much they are focusing on developing some of those really important gross motor skills. Babies, even though they're not moving around a whole lot, will sometimes spend days and weeks learning how to roll over from their backs to their bellies because their arm often gets stuck in the way. And sometimes as parents, it's hard to sit there and watch your baby look like they're struggling when in reality, they probably don't feel the same way. Babies are genetically hardwired to eventually master this skill given the appropriate opportunities. And it doesn't require any cheerleading on your part or any words of encouragement. It's something they're going to do no matter what. Of course, many parents, myself included, sometimes find it irresistible to offer your child at least some words of encouragement. But the point is, it's not even necessary. All children, given the right opportunities, will master these skills. It's just what they are driven to do. I get many messages every single week from viewers that all ask me relatively the same question. They typically have an older baby or a toddler that they cannot get to focus on some of the activities that they've put out on the shelves for them. And my first question to them is always, well, what is your child doing with their time? This is when the parent has that aha light bulb moment when I explain that children in this time period are focused on gross motor development. It doesn't mean that they're not interested in the activity Activities, it just means that their natural desire, their urge to master these gross motor movements is much more intense. So that is what they're focusing on. It is this child who does not want to sit still and work on an activity
activity in one place. They would much rather be over by the furniture pulling up and learning how to cruise or practicing their own balance and trying to find their own two feet. Or maybe they're already at that stage and they just want to run around and throw things and kick or climb or slide. That's just what seems to absorb all of their activity throughout the day. And that is 100% entirely natural. So if you are finding that your child is like the child I just described, then it's much better for you to do exactly what Montessori always encourages, follow the child. Do not try to steer your child toward shelf activities or ask them to sit still for very long periods of time working on one activity. Instead, you should be closely observing exactly what skills it is they're working to master and then trying to come up with different things that you can provide for them to support them in this mastery. One of the first times that you're going to find yourself as a parent trying to figure out how to help your child develop some of these gross motor skills might be during what everyone calls tummy time. Now there are a few parenting approaches out there that actually advocate not using tummy time with your children for a variety of different reasons, but the long and the short of it is that it does not follow natural gross motor development. You are placing the child in a position which they do not naturally know how to get into and out of themselves. And if you want some more information on some of these approaches, I will leave some links in the description down below. But I would venture to guess that many parents watching this video are implementing tummy time as per their pediatrician's advice. If you are placing your child in tummy time and finding that they absolutely do not like it, but you still want them to have tummy time during the day, there are some things that you can do to jazz up tummy time simply by changing your location. You can do a lot for your child's interest and motivation to stay in tummy time for a little bit longer each and every day. And what I mean by changing location is instead of doing tummy time in the same exact place every single day, that you think about other potential opportunities and places where your child could do tummy time. So you might take them to the couch, obviously supervised because you don't want them to fall off the couch, but allow them to spend some tummy time on the couch, perhaps maybe at a little bit of an incline. Or if you have any type of infant support pillow, like a boppy or some type of lounger, you could try to implement tummy time on the edge of one of those pillows, again, with your supervision. If the weather is nice, you could take your blanket and your baby and go outside and set up a nice little spot in the grass and do tummy time right at the edge of the blanket where your child can see the grass and if they are moving their arms they can reach out and feel the texture of the grass and offer a little bit more of a sensory experience. For slightly older babies you can also offer little sensory play activities while they're doing tummy time. One of my favorites that I did with both of my girls was to lay out a towel on the kitchen floor and I would fill a little cookie sheet with just a tiny little bit of water maybe about a quarter inch and place a couple of bath toys in it. Just enough that they could float around if the baby were to hit them and then place the baby on the towel and again supervise but allow them to have a little bit of fun during tummy time that way. So simply by changing up what you're doing for tummy time you can offer a little bit more motivation for your child to work on keeping their head up and exercising their neck and their shoulder and their back muscles. Once your baby gets closer to that six month mark and they're actively scooting around perhaps they're sitting themselves up they're not really spending a whole lot of time in tummy time anymore because they are a little bit more mobile. This is when you can start to think about all of the other opportunities that you have for encouraging gross motor development, even just around your house. The first thing you should think about is having open floor space to explore. A child who is confined to a baby swing or a jumper or a playpen even is restricted in their movement. They're not going to have as much space or many opportunities to work on developing gross motor skills. Skills. So as much time as you can offer them on a blanket on the floor or if you have carpeting just somewhere on the carpet that's comfy and clean, the more opportunities you can give for them to spend time in those places, the much better off they're going to be when it comes to gross motor development. If you are interested in learning a little bit more about the importance of freedom of movement for infants, I actually did an entire video on that already, which I will link up here and in the description box down below for you guys to watch after you're done watching this one. So other than the floor, there are many other common household pieces of furniture that your young child is going to find 
find very helpful in the mastery of some of these skills, including things like low shelving. So any of the activity shelves that you might have in your child's playroom if they have one or in their bedroom. If you have low coffee tables in your house, that's something that they will pull on. The edges of couches and ottomans or low stools, anything like that your child is going to find helpful in aiding them in learning how to eventually pull themselves up and begin walking independently. For children who are interested in climbing things, stairs are incredible. If you have a set of stairs in your house, then count yourself lucky. Obviously, you do want to baby-proof them if at all possible to avoid your child going up and down the stairs when they're not supervised, but something that I do with my infant right now and I find to be incredibly helpful is to give her stair climbing practice time. So our stairs are gated off, but anytime we need to go up or down the stairs, I open the gate and let her go all by herself with me right behind her just for safety purposes. Sometimes if she's really needing some extra energy to burn off, then we make an activity out of it. I will actually go to the stairs even though we do not need to go up or down the stairs at all at that given time and we'll open the gates and just go up and down the stairs on repeat as many times as she wants. Another great totally free opportunity for gross motor development is simply getting outside with your child. Now with every Everything that's going on right now, it might be a little bit more difficult to go to a place like a park, but ordinarily I would suggest if you have a park nearby, going to the park is fabulous for gross motor development, but that's not the only place that you have available. Simply getting outside into your own front yard or backyard can do wonders. Just allow your child to explore, allow them to practice navigating going uphill or downhill or climbing over some obstacle like a log or some fixture that you have in your yard already. Allow them to use a tree for stability and feel the bark on their hands. All of it, not only only is it good practice for gross motor development, but it's also really good sensory exploration for them. And there are just so many natural opportunities that cannot be reproduced inside the home. It's just so incredibly beneficial for a young child who is in this stage of constant movement. Even better is if you have open space near you, perhaps with some woods or a small trail or a creek, or if you are so lucky to live near the ocean, if you have a beach nearby, exposing your child to all of these different places Places that have uneven ground and unpredictable pathways and obstacles that need to be overcome. These are all excellent practice for gross motor development as your child learns to navigate what their body is capable of and how to control their movements. However, if you are stuck indoors and are not able to go outside or perhaps you don't have any natural safe space for your child to explore at the current moment, there are still many ways that you can support your child's gross motor development indoors as well. And some things that you might like to consider adding to your child's environment if they are not already present are simple things like a basket of balls. Not only are balls wonderful for your child to practice throwing and kicking, and of course make sure they are soft balls if they're going to be using them for that purpose, but also for the crawling child who is not quite walking yet, you will often find that they'll make a game of it themselves to take a ball and knock it with their hand a little bit and watch the ball roll away and then they will crawl after it and repeat the activity many times after that. For a younger toddler, you might consider one of those little self-propelled ride-on car vehicles that they can get on top of themselves and they use their feet to propel themselves around. As your child does get a little bit older, usually from around 18 months or so, you can introduce them to a balance bike, which is a bike with no pedals where they learn literally to balance first before you ever introduce the idea of riding on something with pedals. And then around the age of two, a toddler becomes a little bit more coordinated in their movements and they are able to learn how to navigate an actual pedal tricycle. So that could be something to consider as well. Another great one is a play tunnel. Babies who are crawling love to play peekaboo from the different ends of the tunnel. They love to just crawl through. Sometimes they'll sit up in the middle of the tunnel if they're still small enough to do so, or they'll actually experiment with rolling inside the tunnel. There's just a lot of different ways that it can be used aside from just going through it. Children also love the feeling of their bodies sliding through space and they love to experiment with that. So if you have the space for 
one of those indoor slides, something small that perhaps even folds up when you're not using it that you can just bring out from time to time, then that would be a great investment. Not only will young children use it for its intended purpose, which is sliding, but they will also eventually learn how to climb themselves up the slide backwards, which is not only fun for them, but also a really great way for them to actually build up some of that muscle tone and strength and coordination. Another really simple and fun one that anyone can do is to set up an obstacle course for your child in your house. So that could include things like placing a variety of pillows on the floor. If you have any sort of tent that they can run through or have to climb into and out of, if you have any furniture at all that can be climbed underneath, blankets that can be set up that have to be run through, there's all kinds of different opportunities for this. But setting up an indoor obstacle course is always great fun. Just make sure to focus on providing a variety of different movements that your child will have to make as they complete the obstacle course. Another really fun piece of indoor equipment that can be used for gross motor development in a huge variety of ways is a pickler triangle. Now, while you will see pickler triangles in a lot of Montessori inspired spaces and they most certainly fall in line with this whole idea of natural gross motor development, they are not expressly a Montessori invention, if you will. The name pickler is actually a namesake from Dr. Emmy Pickler, who was a Hungarian pediatrician in the early 1900s. And she met and heavily influenced Magda Gerber, who was the woman who founded the RIE approach to parenting, which stands for Resources for Infant Educators. The RIE approach does have a very specific set of principles and ideologies behind it. And I can leave some information about the RIE approach in the description box down below for you guys if you're interested in learning a little bit more about it. The RIE approach also has a lot in common with Montessori philosophies. So sometimes in learning more about Montessori, you will also come across things in the RIE approach that seem to fit together with it very perfectly. And one of these ideas that does line up between both Rye and Montessori is this idea of natural gross motor development. So the Pickler Triangle was invented to encourage and foster that. It is intended for children who are learning how to pull up from as early as six or seven months old, they can pull up on the bars of the Pickler Triangle and learn how to balance themselves. Once they reach at least a year old and they're kind of closer to walking or perhaps already walking, they will start exploring climbing and actually going up the side of the Pickler Triangle. As they get a little bit older, they will eventually learn how to go over the top of the Pickler Triangle and back down again. You can also add a slide or a ramp to one side of the Pickler Triangle and provide yet another way for your child to interact with it. So not only is the Pickler Triangle incredibly beneficial for building your child's actual muscle tone and strength, they're also building coordination as they're learning how to position their hands and feet to climb up and balance themselves. And they're also gaining a sense of confidence because for some children it is really scary to be that high up off the ground and to have to maneuver their bodies to be able to get back down on their own and perhaps even over the other side for the very first time. So they're working on a lot of different things just by climbing on a Pickler Triangle. But beyond its original intent, a Pickler Triangle is so useful for a whole variety of different things. If you place a blanket over the top of it, it's instantly a tent. Your child can then use it as a little reading nook or they can have a little sleepover camp out in there. As your child gets older and they're experimenting more with open-ended play and pretend play, then they might use it for puppet shows. It's just an incredibly versatile piece of equipment to have available, and I know that both of my girls love it. So the Pickler Triangle that you're seeing my girls climbing on in this video is actually Sprout's Wooden Climbing Triangle, and I will leave a link to it in the description box down below if you're interested in checking out a little bit more about the specific dimensions and other specifications on it. But I did also want to let you know that I have a discount code for you. If you use my code HAPAFAM at checkout on Sprout's website, whether you are buying a Pickler Triangle or any of their other amazing Montessori at home furniture, it will get you 10% off of your total purchase price, which is awesome. Another great idea that I've seen in several different Montessori 
Montessori spaces now are these river stepping stones that you can purchase online. These are fabulous for encouraging your child's sense of coordination and their balance as they have to get from one stone to the next without falling off. Another very simple and more traditional Montessori material that you can incorporate for gross motor movement is a balance beam. And this is something that you could even DIY in your own home if you have the materials laying around to work with because all you would need is a couple of pieces of wood. Children naturally want to learn how to balance themselves and it doesn't even need to be very high off the ground for it to be effective. This way you don't have to worry about your child falling and potentially injuring themselves. And finally, one other larger piece of indoor equipment that again is not necessarily Montessori but it fits in line with the ideas behind natural gross motor development in a Montessori environment would be these new repositionable foam cushion couch things. I think the most popular one that most people have heard of is the Nugget and I will leave a link down below if you've never seen it before but I do know that there are a variety of other spin-offs of this Nugget couch to meet a variety of different budgets so definitely shop around if you decide to invest in one of these things. They can be configured in a thousand different ways. Your child can climb up them, your child can slide down them, your child can sit on top of them. If they build it in such a way that they can climb underneath them then they can go underneath them. Your child if they're old enough might physically be rearranging the pieces of this couch into different configurations and not only using their creativity but also building up all of that strength and coordination to move the pieces because they're pretty big. I just feel like there's an endless variety to the different ways that one of these things can be used to develop your child's gross motor skills and if you can't already tell I don't have one but I think they're pretty awesome and it is definitely something that I personally am looking into getting at some point down the road. So those are all of my suggestions for encouraging your child's gross motor development and meeting your child's need for movement, especially during the younger years. If you have any suggestions, then please leave them in the comments down below and share them with us. If you liked today's video, then please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And just in case you are new to my channel, I did want to let you know that this video is part of a much larger series called Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori philosophies at home with your children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in learning more about, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye!